Hello, welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss uh, with the author of a new book, Ayodhya, City of Faith, City of Discord. Uh, Mr. Wali Singh is here with us. He's a journalist and um, uh, we go he's been to Ayodhya plenty of times while he was researching the book. So the first thing I want to begin with is that the Supreme Court has ruled on the Ayodhya matter. and. Um, if, if the ruling had been different, say if the Muslim side had been allotted that plot of land, the 1500 square feet, then uh, what, how would Ayodhya have responded? Uh, well, thanks for having me here, firstly. Uh, I think uh, it was not something that anybody was expecting, in the sense that given the prevailing politics, nobody was expecting that the Muslim side would would get a favorable verdict. I mean, that's a sad truth, but it is the truth. And if there was a verdict that was in favor of the Muslims, I spoke to a lot of Muslims there, right? I was there on the day. They were quite clear that it would have led to actually more tension, more strife, even perhaps more bloodshed if the verdict was not what it is. Okay. Which is to say that if the verdict was in favor of the mosque, there would have been perhaps more tension, as it would have given something in the words of a, of a local there, a stick to beat them with again. But after the judgment came out and the mosque had not got the land, did, the, did you get a chance to speak to people and see if their opinion had changed somewhat? So this is after the verdict, like on the day of the verdict or the next day of the verdict, where we saw that there was no incident of any kind of protest or violence. Uh, in fact, the next day, or in fact, the day itself and the next day was being celebrated as Milad al Nabi or the birthday right. of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, in Ayodhya itself, uh, the administration kind of uh, both cautioned uh, Muslims against you know taking out any kind of processions, and uh, there was no celebration of Prophet Muhammad's birthday. But the next day, outside, say 20, 30 kilometers out of Ayodhya, there were villages where Muslims decided to just go ahead and celebrate and. In, despite knowing that uh, the judgment is not perfect for them, but they have no choice but to just get along with it. Okay. So there is a sense of, a, uh, what's the word for it, a sort of forced silence or a forced acceptance. But the bottom line, as people have said, that it is now being accepted. There is no other way around it. All right. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, you tracked Ayodhya. So how, what defines the city now? Is it, uh, is it the same city which you read about when you were doing your research? In, I mean, it is like a small town based entirely on its pilgrim sort of religious economy based on temples, seasonal uh, festivals and so on. Uh, so like any other, not really any other, but I think like many other small towns, it is uh, struggling with its infrastructure, basic infrastructure, it is struggling with no industry, lack of employment, lack of good hospitals, lack of schools. And as a young boy told me, there are not even puncture shops, like there's nothing there in the sense. It's all, it's a small town based on religion, especially Hindu religion. And so in that sense, it has not changed. In fact, I think people have across communities, they're like, maybe you now this is the end of the uh, dispute and they can perhaps now move on. So while the moving on sentiment is being criticized, uh, I think we, we need to remember that if somebody has been living in a place which is uh, full of like that kind of decay because of one issue, and if that issue now seems that it is being resolved, whether rightly or wrongly, I think a lot of people are kind of relieved that at least now they don't have this issue, the dispute. They don't have to go over this again and again. Yeah, again and again. So okay. that, that was the sentiment on the day of the verdict and in the subsequent days. What happens in the future, we'll find out. Okay. But it is linked to the larger politics of the country. Okay. So. Tell me a little bit about the land question. It's not just the 1500 uh, plot of land. It is a, a land dispute which Ayodhya has seen over uh, decades and centuries. What was that about? So the particular site, if right. you mean, right. yes, uh, it's not centuries actually. The first mention comes around 1855 right. and so on. So uh, that also, as people have written, and I've also mentioned in the book, that it was about Hanuman Gadi. And in fact, Muslims claimed that the Bairagis of Hanuman Gadi had raised down a small mosque 
on top of Hanuman Gadi. And that uh, was the cause of a Malvi from Amethi who was leading like a campaign with his band of followers was marching towards Ayodhya to try and reclaim that uh, mosque, that Hanuman Gadi area. So when that uh, conflict took place, uh, Muslims were outnumbered and they ran and took shelter in this mosque called Babri Masjid. That's how the first mention uh, I found out came in about the mosque itself. Uh, but what about uh, the idea that there was a temple? Where did you find the first mention? The first mention of a temple is mentioned in the travelers' accounts. Uh, Tiffen Haller and the Jesuit priest from Austria. And there was, I think, William Finch, who was another British traveler. We, they have all described that there is a temple uh, that people worship as the place of Ram's birth. And there's also a cradle. So what I would say is that uh, uh, Hindus have incrementally increased their presence all over Ayodhya and as well as this site, this particular site. So Ram Janma Bhumi uh, is, uh, was there as a place. It was worshipped. Um, but, you know, nobody was really like so... Uh, madly sure that that is Ram Janbhumi. All of Ayodhya is Ram Janbhumi. It is only in the last few decades or in the last three decades, actually almost three decades, that we see that this complete fixation, you know, that is that is exactly the spot. How did that come about? And it, I think it is carefully manufactured. You mean, Since was it the British chroniclers who started this process? Yeah, British chroniclers I, chroniclers, I think, recorded the local priest's version. The mythology. The, the legends. Right. They recorded that and whatever came in the Gazette, once it was recorded, it, it, it was used as evidence that there was. Mm -hmm. uh, the slightly less known fact which people don't talk about is that the British chroniclers also recorded that Ayodhya probably has Buddhist origins mm -hmm. or Jain origins. So those layers of history have completely kind of faded away, layers of religious history, and only one unidimensional history is today is what we see that Ayodhya is only Ram. Whereas Ayodhya is also Jain, there are several Tirthankas who were born there. Ayodhya also is associated with Buddha himself, right. and is also known as Saket. Right. So, and then of course the Muslim layers, which goes back actually centuries, and. I mean, of course, so does Hindu, because there is a 11th century uh, evidence of a Gahadwala temple, a uh, Gahadwala king donating some money and some uh, to the Brahmin priest. But again, it's not necessarily a Ram temple. Mm -hmm. It could have been a Shaivite temple. In fact, in fact, all of North India, in the sense, was a Shaiva, was Shaivite stronghold. And then, as we see that Vaishnava uh, movement uh, matches and then kind of overtakes uh, Shaivite. Uh, places of worship, and then we see that today. So, so how would how would then Ayodhya be today? How would they remember uh, December six? What would it mean for them? I think there would be. Uh, well, I think we know this that the Muslims uh, mark that day as Yom e Gam, mm -hmm. which is a day of mourning because you know the mosque was demolished, so many of them died in Ayodhya itself. Houses were uh, burned down, etc. Uh, this time again, I think, uh, though there has been restraint on the side of the VHP, RSS and Hindus in general, and that restraint is welcome, but uh, let us see, I mean, on the 6th, I think there, there is a sense that, okay, the dispute is maybe finally over uh, across in the town and they can move on to development. And, 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 but what of the demolition itself? You see, those cases are not resolved yet. The, yes, those cases are actually, I mean, they're just slowly crawling. And I think uh, justice would be served if those cases are heard and decided on a fast track basis and not just, you know, languish, allowed to languish, even though courts have said that they should be fast tracked. Also, the, uh, an average Hindu is likely to tell you that it was never a mosque anyway. It was always a temple. And then the other term is the, that is always used is the disputed structure. Right. So you kind of just deny that, mm -hmm. there were, that it was a mosque. Mm -hmm. One always says it was a disputed structure. So you're kind of absolving yourself in a sense that but you demolished for, a religious place. Even for secular people, the, the structure of the mosque meant something. It was a heritage building yeah. and it was a shared heritage for everyone. Yeah. Uh, does that ever come up when you speak to people in Ayodhya? I think uh, the sensibilities are very different. 
um, I mean, uh, educated, urban, maybe more informed people in Ayodhya also would take that view. But the larger, because uh, since 1940s, it has been kind of very carefully through propaganda, through books and pamphlets and so on. It has been drilled down in the minds of the Hindus in that region. Right that this was Ram Janbhumi. And look, there were temples that were Hindu, uh, pillars that are Hindu motives. Right. So it was our temple and uh, invaders came, destroyed the temple, built their mosque. Why don't you tell me about some of the pamphlets that, you know, you mentioned in your book that there's a certain pamphlet which is available, which is an old pamphlet in a new form. So both these pamphlets, the old and the new, are available in Ayodhya. And just tell me who wrote them, what hap what's the history of these? I was shocked. I mean, it was it is like a parallel history. It's pulp history that is being uh, fed to the people there in the form of a booklet, which harks back to these glorious days of uh, Ram. And okay. it takes it back to uh, lakhs of years, millions of years, I think nine lakhs uh, of years. Precise numbers are given. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and then there's also this gory story of how thousands of Hindus were massacred and from their blood and, and so on, the mortar was made for the, for the mosque. Mm -hmm. So you have almost, you know, completely demonized the entire community by writing this pulp history of Ayodhya, which is completely sort of insightful towards one religion. And the people and it's who not wrote history, we should not be propaganda. propaganda. The, the people who wrote this pamphlet, which is a refurbished form, yeah. form of the earlier pamphlet, um, who were they? They were, so they were people, you, you see it again, because India was divided on religious lines. And so there was a lot of uh, strife. The communalization was quite strong in that region. We had riots in Kanpur, Banaras, and Ayodhya also in 1934. So there was already a section of uh, Hindus who were linked with uh, sub-nationalist groups, such as Hindu Mahasabha back then, who were who facilitated, who guided this kind of production of these kind of propaganda pamphlets to make their claims stronger. Is it still available? It is available very much. I think it's 5 rupees or 10 rupees or something like that. It's called Ayodhya ka Rakt Ranjit Itihas. So the blood-soaked history of Ayodhya. And uh, there's no evidence of that. Why is it that people can't tell the difference between this, these stories and history? Is it? I think the narrative has been that uh, Muslims came, they destroyed, they converted, they pillaged, they raped. And uh, that narrative has been there since colonial times, since pre-colonial times. But 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 Ayodhya was a holy site for yes. Muslims as well. Ayodhya was an extremely holy site for Muslims. Uh, why is it that Ayodhya is full of uh, graveyards? Why is Ayodhya is uh, the birthplace of several Sufi fakirs and saints? Even Chirag Delhi. The Chirag Delvi uh, is supposed to have been born there. There is a small little shrine for him. Uh, there is Shah Madar. There are other Sufi saints. So the Sufi movement was strong. When it was strong, then Ayodhya was also a center of Sufi fakirs. There is a patron saint of Ayodhya, as it were, called Badi Bua. Now, that syncretic plural history of Ayodhya is, is almost struggling to survive and make itself heard, make itself seen. And also Ayodhya being such a small place, a lot of outsiders have come in who are not really connected with the And there's an economic the aspect which you mentioned that the temple tourism is the... Yes, I mean that's the only uh, way, mostly only way of income generation. And interestingly they call it Akash Vritti. Uh, a lot of people write what is your profession, they say Akash Vritti, so whatever falls from the sky, which was deciphered to me by a local temple owner, a priest, as that when there is good rain, there are good crops, and then these peasants and farmers come and they spend a lot, and then we also make some money. And so do the shopkeepers, so do the priests, so do the pandas, everybody makes money when there is good uh, rainfall and good crops harvest. Okay. So, so, so now Ayodhya is a little bit at peace compared to how it was before. It's a tenuous peace. There is no choice. One is, uh, it's a uh, very unequal battle. Would uh, you like to go back, visit more now? That yes, yes. I mean, I, I've, I've, I think I'm now completely uh, going to track this subject, track this down because it is reflective of, of what happens in the entire but country. But I'm curious, what is left to track? 
you know, there's lots of left to track. Where will the land be given? Will it be in Ayodhya, the, the Ayodhya, or will it be this loose definition of Ayodhya? Will it, the land be accepted or? Will the land be accepted? But firstly, will the, it also depends on where the land is being given. It is, is it being given in the acquired area? Is it being given there? Is it being given across the river in the district that Ayodhya is? Those are questions that will also convey how a Supreme Court's judgment is implemented by the state and center. Right. Thanks so much, Wale, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching News Click. Thank <laughs> you.